watching the English newscast on Future Television, November 14th. I'm Yumna Naufal, and these are today's top stories. An act of war. French President François Hollande calls the Paris attacks claimed by ISIS that killed 128 people. The pressure is on as 20 countries and organizations meet in Vienna to overcome deep divisions and help end serious civil war. And from Paris to Beirut, Beirut still reeling from the ISIS attack that left 47 people dead and more than 200 wounded in the southern suburb of Burj Brajne. Good afternoon to all our viewers. Gunmen and bombers attacked restaurants, a concert hall and a sports stadium at locations across Paris, killing 127 people in a deadly rampage that was earlier this morning claimed by ISIS, also known as the Islamic State, in an online statement. ISIS did release an undated video in which a militant said France would not live peacefully as long as it took part in U.S.-led bombing raids against its fighters in Syria. The Paris City Hall official said four gunmen systematically killed at least 87 young people at a rock concert at the Bataclan Concert Hall. Anti-terrorist commandos launched an assault on the building, and the gunmen detonated explosive belts, and dozens of shocked survivors were able to be rescued. French police and forensics experts could be seen working outside the hall this morning while crowds of press and onlookers tried to get a glimpse of the proceedings. Some 40 more people were killed in five other attacks in the Paris region. There were six different locations altogether. Also included an apparent double suicide bombing outside the Stade de France National Stadium where President Hollande and the German foreign minister were watching a friendly soccer match. Some 200 people were injured. Reacting French President François Hollande say the attacks in Paris are an act of war organized from abroad by ISIS with internal help. He said, quote, faced with war, the country must take appropriate action without saying exactly what that entailed. Hollande said he would address Parliament this Monday in an emergency meeting and the country would observe three days of official mourning for the victims of Friday's attacks. ISIS released an undated video urging Muslims to attack France. The coordinated assault on Friday evening came as France, one of the founder members of the U.S.-led coalition waging airstrikes against ISIS in Syria and Iraq, was on high alert for terrorist attacks ahead of a global climate conference due to open later this month. Just so you know, this is the deadliest attack. Uh, this was the deadliest attack was on the Bataclan, a popular concert venue where the Californian rock group Eagles of Death Metal was performing. The concert hall was just a few hundred meters from the former offices of the satirical weekly Charlie Hebdo, the target of the deadly attack back in January. With us live from Paris is advisor to the European Parliament, Ms. Catherine Vierling. Catherine, can you hear me? Yes, hello. Good afternoon, Yumna. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Catherine, what was the atmosphere like this morning into this afternoon? Well, as you can imagine, unfortunately, you are very used to this kind of atmosphere, which is a, a very uh, lonely city with um, the Eiffel Tower closed and people not daring getting out, um, you know, just staying at home and just try to, to avoid any uh, mass grouping, being afraid of any further attack. And, uh, of course, um, images are just released everywhere and people are just discovering in the whole country what has been happening yesterday night, which is, frankly, the worst horror we ever lived in France since the Second World War. So probably since the Second World War. I know the President François Hollande uh, said that the borders would be closed. This has not been done since 1944. This was the Second World War, as you said. Uh, we're, we're seeing pictures of leaders uh, arriving to Vienna. Some 20 countries and organizations are meeting in Vienna to try to discuss the deep divisions to help end Syria's civil war. So how do you think what happened in France can affect this? Well, at least we will consider it, I may say, uh, even more seriously and with more realistic options. Up to now, frankly speaking, I was a little bit amazed by um, the, I may say, the frivolity of people uh, dealing with the issue. Um, I'm not targeting um, specialists, the head of the EU at, um, at Damas in Syria, for instance, who was very aware of everything. 
and I'm, I, I'm sure he tried to do his best. But uh, in this very delicate situation, we have to consider who is our worst um, target and what is our priority first. And the target um, is, has been fully revealed yesterday. Um, uh, I'm afraid we have not been attacked directly by a uh, Syrian government, but Daesh and ISIS, as you just said, were uh, blatantly um, uh, revealing themselves as attacking our French citizens. Right. You so know- we have to uh, protect ourselves first. I, I have a question for you. Do you think that this could be, you know, uh, President François Hollande said this was an act of war, something he hadn't said when the Charlie Hebdo attacks took place in January. Do you think this will probably going to change the game vis-à-vis -vis France and uh, Syria and Daesh specifically? Do you think that this could lead to possible uh, boots on the ground or maybe complete withdrawal of France? Which one would it be? Well, first of all, I think we have to, France has to reconsider its strategy. Obviously, it does not work. It's even getting worse and worse. And uh, so we have to be realistic now, and we have to uh, deal on the ground with uh, all goodwill uh, international uh, community people in order to uh, face concretely this horrendous uh, situation. Um, this means that the Vienna Conference is a key moment and Federica Mogherini, uh, who is in charge of our external action service in Europe, uh, made strong declarations. Now, let's see how concrete this will be. It's, it's, it is a very sad day. A lot of people are comparing it to the September 11th uh, of the United States. Um, and so close to the holidays, we can only expect the mood right now to just be completely different in terms we're seeing streets of Paris empty. Uh, this was going, this was a weekend, so it seems that the terrorists specifically uh, were looking to uh, target uh, groups of people on Friday night out and about in bars and concert halls. So the damage, one, it was, was it seems, uh, intended to be quite deep. We're looking at uh, live images now on our screens of Paris streets, flowers lined up there um, next to Le Carillon, which is one of the restaurants that was hit. Um, Catherine, do you think going forward, this is going to, it's probably going to affect things politically, right? Uh, I know we were talking earlier about uh, President François Hollande and the backlash that he has been facing as a president. Indeed, indeed. And uh, for us, uh, we are just facing now a uh, new uh, kind of regional elections. And the general feeling um, is that we need to have strong leadership. Everybody wants strong leadership. Um, some extreme groups are targeting rights issues, but they have demonstrated that concretely on the ground, they have no strong leadership. And um, we have to be balanced. Uh, we need social cohesion. We need an inclusive society. We need to welcome all citizens. All goodwill citizens have to find their place in France. You know, you speak of... So uh, we I'm should just, not go to extremes. Right, I know you're saying that. You speak of inclusion and everything. But, you know, with the wave of migrants coming into Europe now, I know President Hollande just yesterday uh, closed off the borders. But with the wave of migrants coming, the demographics changing, specifically of France, you know, uh, France specifically seemed to be a target because of the n sheer number of people that are also uh, n not just coming into France but going from France to join uh, ISIS in Syria. So s there is something going on in terms of uh, the governance of France or the program, the agenda of France that may not be working. Do you agree? Absolutely. But let's be clear. Um, we should not mix up all kinds of migrants. Uh, I just read, um, and I know that uh, people uh, migrating uh, with regular Schengen visa and uh, with uh, um, uh, regular uh, procedures may not be affected. Uh, the one we are talking about, uh, and I'm referring to a conversation I had with the former prime minister of Slovenia, that the migration we are talking about is really this kind of um, uh, kind of forced um, migrations uh, under the cover of refugee 
uh, uh, statute. And uh, they, he told me clearly that among all people trying to cross the border, right. less than 10% were really refugees escaping a war. Um, there are many people who are absolutely opportunistic to try to, to, to come into Europe and yes. try to, to, to take advantage. I mean, That's I, very clear. I think, it's, uh, I think the security issue now is going to be very different, uh, not just in France, I think in all European countries. Um, President Obama, even the Canadian Prime Minister, and as well as uh, the UK Prime Minister, David Cameron, everybody spoke out condemning these attacks and also uh, afraid of the fear, the, the fear, the way, the fear of the wave of attacks that can actually hit their cities as well, big cities uh, across the Western Hemisphere. I think now there's a, um, there seems to be some sort of worry about what will happen next. Thank you for being with us. That was the advisor to the European Parliament, Ms. Catherine Geerling. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. U.S. President Barack Obama pledged his governance support to France uh, after the attacks in Paris, but said he did not yet know the details of what had happened and that the situation is still unfolding. And we've seen an outrageous attempt to terrorize innocent civilians. This is an attack not just on Paris, it's an attack not just on the people of France, uh, but this is an attack on all of humanity and the universal values that we share. Uh, we stand prepared and ready to provide whatever assistance that the government and the people of France need to respond. Uh, we're going to do whatever it takes to work with the French people and with nations uh, around the world uh, to bring these uh, terrorists to justice and to go after uh, any terrorist networks that go after our people. We don't yet know all the details of what has happened. Uh, we have been in contact with French officials uh, to communicate uh, our deepest condolences to the families of those who have been killed, uh, to offer our prayers and thoughts to those who have been wounded. Uh, we have offered our full support to them. Uh, the situation is still unfolding. Uh, I've chosen not to call President Hollande at this time because my expectation is that he's uh, very busy at the moment. This is a heartbreaking situation and obviously those of us here in the United States uh, know what it's like. Uh, we've gone through these kinds of episodes ourselves. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says there is indication, there is no indication yet that any Canadians were targeted or victims of the attacks in Paris, but that his government would focus on balancing security and freedom amid fear of future attacks. Obviously our hearts uh, and thoughts and prayers go out to our French cousins uh, through this dark and terrible time. And these uh, terrorist attacks are uh, deeply uh, worrying and obviously unsettling to people around the world. Uh, we have offered uh, all of our help and support to the government of France, the people of France at this time, uh, and will continue to engage with our allies uh, around the world in uh, ensuring the safety of Canadians and others, uh, both here at home and around the world. Ma'am, coming up next from Paris to Beirut, the capital still reeling from Flynn Blast. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Arab and international efforts are to be launched soon in order to help confront the repercussions of this year in conflict in light of the recent suicide attack in Beirut's southern suburbs of Burj al -Brajne. To that end, a meeting is expected to be held in Turkey tomorrow between Saudi and French officials on the margins of the G20 summit. Beirut is still reeling from the ISIS-claimed attack that left 47 people dead and more than 200 wounded when two suicide bombers just minute apart went off in a busy street market. Prime Minister Tamam Salam condemned the Paris terrorist attack, deeming it an attack against higher human values. He said Lebanon, which two days ago suffered from the death of dozens of its sons in an ugly terrorist crime, stresses its solidarity with the French people during these difficult times. This marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our headlines. An act of war, the words of French President François Hollande, calling the Paris attacks claimed by ISIS that killed 128 people. The pressure is on as 20 countries meet in Vienna to overcome deep divisions and help end Syria's civil war. 
And Beirut still reeling from the ISIS attack that left 47 people dead, more than 200 wounded in the southern suburb of Burj Brajne. Thank you to all our viewers for watching. Stay safe on this weekend and we'll see you again tomorrow for all the latest. Good night.